Spoiler warning, I will be talking in depth about the film Raya and the Last Dragon. Raya and the Last Dragon is my favorite film. I know, I know, a controversial take, but I hope to explain why I fell in love with this movie. Raya is a movie about, well, Raya. We hear her tell us about how her world was saved and then fell apart again. We get to see Raya's loving relationship with her father. He's her role model. He believes that their world can become one again, or in this story, it's called Kumandra. Raya is skeptical, but she trusts her father. In a party meant to bring together all of the lands, Raya meets another girl named Namari. They share an immediate friendship and love of dragons and their past. Leading by her father's example, Raya trusts Namari and decides to show her the dragon gem. The dragon gem being the last magic created by the dragons, which holds back the evil force called the Droon. Unfortunately, Namari betrays this trust leading her own chief to try and steal the dragon gem. A fight between all of the lands ends up shattering the dragon gem, which allows the Droon to reappear. The Droon push everyone out and Raya's father ends up being turned to stone by them and we reopen to Raya's travel. She's been searching every single river for Sisu, the last dragon to try and restore the dragon gem. Finally, she finds Sisu, the ever amazing, incredible, very goofy dragon. We can see in Raya's interactions with Sisu that her trust in everyone has begun to break down. Raya has a run-in with Namari once again, and Raya and Sisu escape along with the help of Captain Boone, a young boy who's also lost his family to the Droon. They travel to Talon, where Raya insists that Sisu remain on the boat. Sisu, of course, does not listen and is almost eaten by the Droon because of her trust in the Talon Chief. Raya tells Sisu that she cannot trust anyone because that's just how things are now. Oh yeah, and they also meet the most annoying, aggravating, and completely unnecessary characters in this part, so I will not be talking about the monkeys and the baby. I hate them. Raya and Sisu come to a head having a discussion about trust. You have small heads, no tails. You lie to get what you want, like the Talon Chief back there. Yeah, well, the world's broken. You can't trust anyone. Or maybe the world's broken because you don't trust anyone. <laughs> you sound just like my ba. Well, he sounds like a smart man. Yeah, he was. This conversation ends with Sisu running to try to bring the next chief a gift to prove to Raya that you have to trust someone first if you expect them to trust you. Afterwards, they both immediately get caught in a net. After meeting the last man standing in this land, Namari and Raya have a fight. The fight ends with Namari seeing the dragon and looking quite lost. And after the fight, the gang thus far finds out that Sisu is a dragon and all decide to help the cause. The final dragon gem piece is in Talon, which is where Namari is from. They have an argument about how to talk to Namari to get this last piece. After fighting, Sisu takes Raya back to heart to tell her the story of the dragon's last stand against the Droon. Explaining that she doesn't know why her siblings chose her to save the world, but they trusted her and that was important. All the other dragons had been turned to stone. We were drowning in a sea of Droon. But my oldest brother, Pengu, refused to accept defeat. This is where we'd make our last stand. United. So, one by one, they combined all their magic, creating the Dragon Gem. I don't know why they chose me. It could have been any of us. All I know is I trusted them and they trusted me. Raya eventually comes around and decides to trust Namari, but when enacting their plan, Namari pulls out a weapon and aims to shoot Sisu. Raya cannot commit to trusting Namari and Sisu. In an attempt to stop Namari, the arrow flies and shoots Sisu, killing the last dragon. Wanna hurt anybody? What are you doing? 
You just want a better world. Like we all do. Sisu. I trust you, Nomari. The water leaves and the Droon are able to attack the last land now, and everything is falling to pieces. Angry, Raya and Namari fight, but Namari tells Raya that she is just as much at fault as herself. In the end, it all comes down to trust, and Raya has to place her trust in Namari. Everyone is turned to stone except for Namari, and we see her contemplate running away. But instead, she puts the dragon gem back together, and through their trust, the dragon gem is saved, and the dragons are able to return. Sisu is resurrected by her siblings, and we have a warm, happy ending. Trust is clearly the main theme of Raya. Raya has a great role model, her father, who shows her that you need to trust others first. This backfired, though, causing Raya to be hardened to the rest of the world. In the end, I think it's extremely valuable that Raya has to completely let go and trust in Namari. This is even more impactful because the friends she's made up until this point tell Raya that there's no way that they will trust Namari. She has to be the first step and step further than she has ever before. I think that it also speaks a lot to a climate of negativity. The Droon are a very literal, physical embodiment of human negativity. Sisu, after being asked what the Droon are, says, What are true names? A plague, born from human discord. They've always been here, waiting for a moment of weakness to attack. They're like the opposite of dragons. Instead of bringing water and life to the world, they're like a relentless fire that consumes everything in its wake until there's nothing left except ash and stone. In our reality, there's this similar plague of humanity I think that the directors and writers of this movie really wanted to visualize this in a literal way that anyone of any age could understand. In the end, the thing that saved them was working together and trusting each other. Trusting that there was something good in each other after all, underneath all of that droon negativity. Between all of the trust and allegories for humanity, a reason why this movie is my favorite is Sisu. She represents an almost childlike idea of trust She's goofy and silly, and she makes jokes that are honestly not funny at all. <laughs> but that's what makes her charming. She doesn't understand how certain people things work. And she can be serious sometimes, but some might see her level of trust as naive. Here's my plan. We infiltrate Fang, confront Namari, and offer her something nice and go, Hey, want to help us save the world? Because all it takes is one gem piece. Yes! I've been waiting for someone to ask me. Here you go. Best friends forever. We see her trust the old lady in the town only to be backstabbed. We see how frustrated Sisu is by the fact that she was. And I assume that Raya sees Sisu as a child who doesn't understand the negativity of the world. But it's shown clearly that despite her goofiness, Sisu does understand. She trusts Namari because she sees the good in Namari, despite Namari's weaknesses. She isn't perfect by any means and may be a bit overly trusting, but she makes it work. In that sense, you could say that she's a foil character to Raya who, through experiences, doesn't trust anyone. A huge bonus for me is that this movie has three female leads, though one is technically a dragon, and they also have no specific romantic interests. There was definitely something going on between Raya and Namari, but nothing in your face. It was very refreshing to watch a movie where there was no prince in shining armor to come and try to save them. It was just Raya and her friends pulling through a difficult situation, and I find a lot of worth in that. Raya wasn't alone. She did end up making friends, and she trusted them to a point. I think that meeting others from other lands who didn't betray her trust paved the way for her to trust Namari in the end, even when those friends didn't at first. In the end, those friends decided to trust Raya after her own sacrifice. 
bringing together everyone in the lands just like her father had hoped in the beginning. Instead of looking at each other and seeing their differences as negatives, the ending brings them together and they are finally Kumandra once again. <laughs>